There are so many different aspects to pricing that when you start putting that into a spreadsheet and the difference, and the real difference is being able to dif you know, discern what that impact is on the customer. So if we take like the, at the very top, you know, competitive based pricing, you know, what's everybody else charging and we fit within that, you know, the, the, which is kind of fine. Predatory pricing, which is seeing what they're all doing there, but we're going to aggressively try and undercut what everybody else is doing in order to get ourselves into a, a particular market for a particular reason. Walmart is the obvious one that comes to, to mind there in, in being able to get into a place and then maybe um, you know, sustain yourself over a, a longer period. Coming across from here, so and again, these things are really to kind of prompt the different kind of pricing that, that could be could be helpful in actually going to market and being then to change over time. So, you know, bundle pricing, the, the big, um, the Rogers and the Bells of this world, you know, putting everything together, how does that all equate? You know, not just individual products, so some may be done discounted in order to help serve others. Loyalty pricing, so based on the lifetime value of a client, credit card companies are probably the best at that, you know, in terms of, you know, being able to give big incentives up front because over the lifetime value of the client, they know they're going to make it back. Marginal pricing, um, so that's based on the, the, the marginal price driven by external conditions. So not necessarily covering all your costs, but covering some of those costs for a given period in order to see yourself through. Um, the finance driven one, the cost plus pricing, that's pretty obvious, that's what it costs to make it. But like absorption pricing, which is where, for example, you're making 10 different products and some of those fixed costs are spread across lots of the products. You know, how do you then proportion that one across the, the, all the things that you're making? Um, I'll go into the, you know, the dynamic pricing, I think. I guess maybe 10, 15 years ago, everybody on a plane paid the same price for their ticket. Today, I'd be amazed if anybody on the plane paid the same price. You know, that goes up and down with demand. The tickets at a concert, whatever, you know, get nearer the date, there's only a few left, price is going to shoot up. The ability with you know, today's technology to be able to do that has changed that model completely. Um, the limit pricing tariffs restrictions to be those controlled markets um, where people have you know, regulatory um, conditions they have to. Uh, have to abide by, and then out into the market-driven one. So, yeah, based on this is what the market will bear. And I guess Apple kind of came into that a bit with the iPad. That's what the market will bear. That's what we're pricing it at. Yeah, take it or leave it. Message to their to the carriers as well. Um, and, and other things, you know, psychological pricing. What's the the difference in the value of a you know 4.99 versus five dollars and eight cents? There is a lot of available information that shows that, that works, and that's where I, I really want to emphasise getting into the business plan in there on the spreadsheet to say, if we charge 4 99 this is the likely demand. If we charge $5.08, that needs to come down and therefore you can see the impact that's going to have. But it's really understanding those elasticities of the demand, what they really are. So when working with big people like, um, say, Postal Service, um, which is in the, you know, basically they say this year we're going to charge 3.5% more. Well, that's kind of ridiculous because you, you, I'll take the UK example. You, you just went from a 29 pence stamp and you made it 31 pence. You're actually, you're going to drop your total overall value there by doing that. So just adding 3% is a really, really daft idea. You need to change the, the, the pricing model completely by, by um, you know, actually figuring out what that impact is on your overall volumes and, and margins that you're trying to make. And, and all of that kind of pushing out there. So whether you're then looking at price leadership um, or even promotional pricing. And you know, one of the things that happens here, of course, looking at, um, I think, the, uh, the large grocery cho chains, you know, you know, pricing things to get people in the store so they do the whole weekly shop rather than just that. It's, it's really understanding what those equivalent models can be because that then really helps look at the business plan and what is or isn't going to um, actually work. Um, so my conclusions, um, very tightly defined value propositions. Once those are very tightly defined, to get funding, great business plan needs to emphasize you, its people. Um, passionate, humble, and dedicated. Those are the things that work. Um, great product on its own is no recipe for success. I've seen numbers of great products that just simply didn't quite get as far as they could have. Um, but a compelling story around digital, mobile, and Ontario, I think it's a great place to be right now. And as Kathleen says, a couple of those reports I've been involved with, I think there's a very good reason why um, this market now, with the, you know, the access to talent, people are you know, looking here, you know, the bit I would position it as is the, you know, the, the Silicon Valley for mobile, I think is here right now. And I think all the conditions are in place right now for, uh, for you know, this to be a very exciting place for, for people to be.